Hi, this is Ujwal Gandhi from SpatialThoughts.com. Today, I want to talk to you about a new way of working with large satellite imagery without having to download and process them locally. This is enabled by a few new key technologies, namely cloud-optimized GeoTIFF, which is a new format that allows you to fetch only the portion of GeoTIFF files that is needed for your analysis, and STACK, which is, stands for Spatio-Temporal Asset Catalog which allows you to run queries against a large cloud hosted database and find the images that you need. Uh, there's a new plugin called uh, Stack Browser, which allows you to browse this catalogs, search for the imagery you need and download them uh, as cloud optimized GeoTIFF. So let's get started. So here I'm in QGIS 3.22. Uh, the first step, I want to explain the problem. Uh, we want to now uh, download images for a city. So this is the city of Kolkata in India. I've downloaded the boundary file from OpenStreetMap. And now we want to uh, create uh, a mosaic of Sentinel-2 images. This is a 10 meter resolution imagery and I want to download and create a mosaic for my analysis in QGIS. Uh, typically this uh, Sentinel-2 tiles come in large 100 kilometer by 100 kilometer tiles. That means if I wanted to download only the portion for this city, I'll still have to download the large tile and then clip it. That means I need to uh, first download this large file and also process it locally to uh, clip this. Uh, instead, uh, cloud optimized GeoTIFF allow you to get the portion of the image that you need and process them uh, using desktop tools. Uh, this city also is covered by two different tiles. So uh, if I were to do this in a traditional way, I'll have to spend a few gigabytes of bandwidth downloading all the data, and then maybe uh, uh, many hours or minutes uh, doing the data crunching locally. But instead, we'll uh, show you the way uh, to use this in a, a way that doesn't require all this heavy data processing. I've installed this plugin called Stack API Browser. Uh, you, it's available in the QGIS plugin repository. So I'm going to uh, open it up. Uh, there are uh, quite a few different uh, catalogs available by default. If you want to use a catalog that is not there, you can easily add the URL. Uh, we're going to use the planetary computer stack API catalog. Uh, they have a whole bunch of uh, open data sets available uh, to query and use. Uh, here, uh, once you uh, use this and say fetch collections, you'll get the connections. We're going to use the uh, Sentinel-2 level two data connections. You can here uh, filter by date. Uh, just going to set this filter to about uh, two day, two months from now. So I want to get the imagery collected within the last two months over uh, this region. And we're going to compute the extent from uh, the layer that we have loaded. So it's going to query for all images uh, whose footprint intersects uh, this particular uh, city boundary. Uh, we also have a way to specify additional filters. Uh, this You can do this using uh, Stack. Stack is defines a set of standards uh, on how to query metadata for certain items. And this is a big deal because every data set has the metadata stored in different uh, fields and formats. And this uh, spec allows you to standardize that. So we're going to use uh, the Stack query language to filter this, where we'll say we only want the uh, tiles which have the property cloud cover less than 10%. And this is a standard Stack filter that you can uh, specify here. Uh, let's search for this. You see the result of our query here. We have multiple images matching our criteria. Let's look at the, the first match here. We'll click this add footprint button. Uh, that's going to add the footprint of the tile. You can see this is a very large tile. We don't need all the pixels in this tile. We only need the portion that overlaps with our um, area of interest. Um, let's just get this uh, data to uh, load it into QGIS. I'm going to click view assets. Uh, each band of this image uh, comes as separate file. Each file is a cloud optimized GeoTIFF. Uh, let's do a uh, red, green, blue composite. So I'm gonna get the red uh, image, green image, and blue image. Okay. I'm gonna get uh, three layers here. All of this are 10 meter resolution uh, images, but you can see it just loaded very quickly to QGIS. And that is because they are cloud optimized GeoTIFF, it, uh, as QGIS is asking it to display, it's saying you are quite zoomed out. You don't need the full resolution data. I'm gonna give you the lower resolution pyramid uh, that is uh, optimized for this level. 
So all cloud optimized geotiffs have built-in pyramids that allow you to request the data at a lower resolution. As I zoom in, you will see the bottom here. It's now requesting higher resolution data for this bounding box. That means I don't need to get rest of the tiles at high resolution, only the portion that is visible on the map. And that allows you to easily uh, interactively explore this data. And remember, this is still a regular geotiff. So it's not a tile uh, that is uh, <clears throat> served from the cloud. It's just regular uh, data. So you can still inspect it, do any raster analysis that you want, uh, uh, just like a regular geotiff. Since we want to create an RGB composite, let's just put all these three bands together in a single file. We're going to use the processing toolbox and use this tool called Build Virtual Raster. Uh, virtual Raster is another great format that allows you to put multiple files together without actually consuming this space. It is creates a file that is just a pointer to the source data and allows you to work with the file uh, as if it was a single file. So we're going to bring uh, this dialog up. I'm going to select three layers, the band two, three, and four. Uh, since we want to create a single image with these three images as bands, I'm going to check this box here. Uh, do not forget to check this box, otherwise this tool will not work correctly. We're going to leave all the default settings to default, and I'm going to save this as a file called tile one. Run this. As I'm running the tool, uh, QGIS is merely creating a text file that describes how to put these tiles together. And if I just show you the file here, you can see this is a file that is just four kilobytes, but it still allows me to work with this uh, whole uh, three images as if it was one image. I can even remove these three images from my QGIS and I, can, I have the whole uh, tile loaded in QGIS as an RGB composite. Let's get the, the missing portion here so we can create a nice composite. Back to the Stack API, let's just look at the footprint of the second asset. And this looks like it intersects with the remaining portion. So I'm gonna get the assets from here as well. Uh, same four, three, and two. And uh, same way, we're gonna now create uh, a tile to virtual raster. So we can uh, have uh, two tiles together. And again, we don't forget to check this box, place each input band in a separate band, save to file, and this is gonna be tile two. Right, and we'll just remove all the other three images. We don't need them anymore. We're gonna fix the, the visualization later on. Right now, let's just get uh, our images correct. Uh, we have the full tiles, but as you can see, our area of interest is pretty small. So let's just clip both of them to our uh, area of interest. We can use the tool clip raster layer by mask layer. You know, clip the tile one first, and we're gonna select this uh, mask layer. And we're gonna save the result as another uh, VRT file. We're going to just uh, do tile one dot clipped. And this one's done. Uh, I'm going to just quickly change this to tile two and also write this out as tile two dot clipped. Okay. Um, we can remove our full tiles from QGIS. We don't need them anymore. And we can even put this down here, just remove it. All right, so here we go. We have now both of these tiles uh, streaming from the cloud, getting clipped and displayed in QGIS as uh, an RGB composite. And you can see these are two individual tiles that are available for uh, this area of interest. Uh, it'll be nice to just create a mosaic of this and save this as a GeoTIFF file on my computer. I don't want it to be streamed from cloud every time I open this. So uh, we'll create another virtual raster first to mosaic them. So we're gonna do a build virtual raster. This time we're gonna take this 
tile one, tile two, both clipped. And this time we will not check this box because these are two separate tiles. We want to create mosaic. So we don't want to check this box that says put them in a separate band. And I'm going to save this as mosaic. And we're going to have our mosaic file loaded to QGIS in just a second. This is a single file describing how to take the raw data, put them together, and clip it to form a single file. All right, so now we have done all our processing. Let's get the pixels at the native resolution downloaded to our machine and get a GeoTIFF file for our result. And we can use the tool translate. This runs the GDAL translate tools, which allows you to uh, convert between formats. So we're converting from a virtual uh, raster to a GeoTIFF file. And um, we'll keep all this default. We want to compress it. Remember to always add compression to your GeoTIFF files. Otherwise, GeoTIFF files tend to get very large. So we're going to do a high compression. This is a lossless compression suitable for scientific data, such as uh, this. And finally, we're going to save the file. This time, I'm going to change the format to be a TIFF file and save it as mosaic.tiff. And I'm going to click run. What's happening now is QGIS is requesting the pixels at 10 meter resolution from the cloud for the portion that is needed to create this final mosaic. And this is where the data processing and data transfer is actually happening. Till now, it was all happening uh, in a real-time way, trying to fetch data from the cloud. Now it's getting the real pixels needed to create this composite. And at the end, we're going to get a file on our computer that is a regular GeoTIFF file. And there you have it. Our mosaic.tiff is now created and loaded. And this file now lives on a computer, but it was created using the data that is hosted in the cloud and only fetching the portion that is needed. So you can now explore this data. This is 10 meter per pixel resolution data. We can visualize this a little better. Remember when QGIS puts together the virtual mosaics, the band orders are in alphabetical order. So we have three bands, the band two, three, four are put together, but the RGB is uh, uh, a band three, band two, band one. So we're gonna change the combination here. So this is gonna display the RGB composite and we can apply a, a decent stretch here. Uh, typically the uh, earth observation images have reflectances between zero and 0 0.3. And since these are scale values, uh, zero to 3000 is a, a decent uh, visualization. Um, so I'm just gonna change it to zero to 3000. Uh, this is just a preferred visualization for uh, Sentinel-2 data. And you can always tweak this to create a visualization that is uh, better than uh, the default one that you need, right? So we, now we have uh, Sentinel-2 GeoTIFF created um, and clipped using QGIS. I want to show you the, the final file on my disk. The final file is the mosaic.tiff. This is an 8.5 megabyte GeoTIFF file. Uh, it contains three bands, but the data is only for the portion of the city. Remember, if we had to do this the traditional way, we had to uh, download gigabytes of data and then process them to create this. This would have taken hours versus just in a few minutes, we were able to create this uh, on a computer using the power of cloud-optimized GeoTIFF and uh, Stack API. Thank you for watching. Hope you like this video. This is the new way of doing remote sensing in the cloud. This is also known as cloud native geospatial. I'm going to add some resources in the description if you want to learn more about how this technology works and how it can adopt it in your workflows. Do check them out and thank you.